So I just wanted to make a quick video about uh, my hometown. Uh, anybody who knows me knows I'm from Kuburni. Uh, I was raised here and then I moved out to uh, Fleetwood when I was nine and then came back when I was about 12 or something. Uh, but I just wanted to do a little video of all the changes that's gone on in, in, the, in my lifetime. You know, I'm 40 years old now, well, 39, but nearly 40. And I think the changes that this town has went through has been unbelievable. I mean, this bridge, look at that, look at the state of this bridge, it's a shame, right? But nevertheless, we started this, started Prestos, uh, which I remember it as Prestos, but it was also Safeway, I think. Uh, was it Safeway? I think it was Prestos and then Safeway. I remember Prestos when I was a kid, but this is the this is all that's left of the building now. Uh, it's all been demolished. I remember somebody was in there that were going to bring it back as a shop at one point, but I think to be honest, Tesco's over the other side, which I'll show you in a minute, is kind of a a new addition to the town. Uh, I wouldn't say. I mean, it's been there a good. I don't know about 10, 15 years, but it's fairly new addition to the town. But this used to be the main supermarket here. This used to be where everybody would come and do their shopping. And uh, the, the, it was called Prestos. So, and then this is a little bridge that, because my dad never had a car, this is a little bridge that we would always walk across, you know. I think it's still in good condition, but there was a fence here at one point. So, uh, I guess in, it's not safe to use anymore. You know, but hey, uh, across here, these are quite old buildings, these ones. There used to be hairdressers in here when I was a kid, and in that little bit there, there's a little shop right there. Uh, I don't know what it is now, if it is anything, but we used to go there during our lunch break at school because they used to sell like uh, little bits and bobs, you know, like uh, pot noodles and you know, like uh, sandwiches and stuff like that, you know. So we all used to go there uh, to. Uh, have a lunch break. That was one of the shops we used to go for a lunch break. Uh, the school used to be up this lane, but now they're building houses. So this used to be one of the entrances to the school. But I'll just show you how quickly the the uh, this bit here over the over the other side of this wall used to be where we used to do sports and stuff like that, you know, like athletics and stuff. But they're building houses now, as you can see. <laughs> you know, but this is where the school used to sit. <laughs> But they moved the school to down to Glengarnock, which is between Beath and Coburnie. But this is the old school site uh, where they're building houses now. Uh, Moor Park's still up there. I think that's still used as a school, actually, Moor Park. Uh, and behind there, behind those trees over there, is actually Moor Park House. It was used as a as a wedding venue for a little while there. Uh, but I don't think it's used now as a wedding venue. I think after it was a wedding venue, they used it to put uh, some people who had like drug addiction and whatnot issues in there uh, to try and rehabilitate them. So I think it was being used for some some purpose at one point, but I don't think it's actually being used now, which is a shame because it's a historic building for Coburnie, a massive historic building. You know, probably one of the older buildings in Coburnie, actually. In here used to be the taxi office. Uh, well, actually, it used to be hairdressers. Then it was a taxi office, uh, and now it's a hairdressers again. I don't know if it was ever not a hairdressers, to be honest. I think the taxi office was this side, and then the, the hairdressers was that side. But, hey-ho. Uh, up here is quite a significant building, actually, in the town. Uh, this one, this is the police station now, but it used to be the registry office. So this uh, police station used to be the registry office where you would register your births and marriages and whatnot. So everybody who got married and was born and, you know, anything else, you know, uh, that a registry office does, I don't have any births and marriages, deaths, I suppose. You know, this is where it would have been done here. It's now the police station because there was a big flood. Uh, and the original police station got uh, got flooded. So they moved it to here. Uh, and they moved the registry office to the, uh, to the library. 
and but it's still it's still a pretty nice building you know I don't know when it was built actually but you know this is the car park for the police vehicles and public and whatnot you know I'm surprised there's not an electric charge point in here actually but it's not a very big building as you can see you know that's the back end of it that's the front end of it but everybody who was I think probably my birth was registered here at some point so that's something I suppose I'll give you a little tour around about it because it is quite a significant building in the town in terms of you know importance I think registry offices you know they get overlooked as important buildings in the town I mean now it's a police station which is an, also an important building you know I mean, it's looking a little bit worse for wear, you know, I could do with a little bit of paint, you know, the moss, cleaning off the roof and whatnot. You know, these these beds, when it was a registry office, all these beds were all planted out with nice plants and whatnot. You know, the council probably would have done that. But I'm guessing the police force don't have the budget for that kind of thing. But, yeah, it's not, it's not a bit overly big building. But it's, uh, it's something, I suppose. Now it's a police station. It's a shame because the actual police station that used to sit down at the cross, the Coburnley Cross we call it, uh, it actually is, uh, has been knocked down. And it was actually quite a good police station. It had set like uh, holding cells and stuff like that in it. Whereas this particular police station doesn't have holding cells. It's just somewhere for the police officers to go and sit and rest and whatnot, you know what I mean, when they're on the break and, you know, that kind of thing. But the wood is looking a bit worse for wear, look at that, look at that wood there. I mean, with it being a police station, you think they would actually spend some money on the repairs. Well, obviously not. I think it is open. I think it is open at certain times for the public. I don't think this is, I think this is one of those police stations that does actually open for the public at certain times. Yeah, there it is, yeah, Kobani Police Office, Monday to Friday, 9am to 7, no, 9am to 5. Uh, and they're closed for lunch between 1 and 2. Uh, Saturday and Sunday they're closed, so today they're closed. You know, today is actually a, a good day for filming, you know, because it's a Sunday, it's early in the morning, that's been going on that, you know. But, yeah, there's the police cars, yeah. See these vans, these vans are really handy for the police because they've got a, they've got a holding cell in the back of these vans. And they could put like uh, people in the back of there. I always think that police cars, like uh, like just like general beat cars, I don't think they do any good really. I think if you're going to have a police car, you may as well have one with a holding cell in the back of it, you know. But yeah, that's a uh, that's a police station, and it used to be the registry office. And here is we preach uh, Christ crucified. I'm not sure. Is this Gospel Hall 18? 97 so it's been there a long time it's been there a while that that place and I always remember it being a church as well it's Sunday so they probably will be having a service today you know it's quite actually nice to see something that was here when I was a kid that's still here you know and this one here this building here used to be uh, it used to be like a shop that repaired like washing machines and hoovers and stuff. I think I remember it being an electrician shop or a plumber shop or something, this building here, but now it's a house. And this one here on the corner, this one here, this used to be, this is quite an important uh, building in the town also. Uh, this is Dunning, this, this, this building used to be called Dunning's and it was a shop. And Dunning's had a few shops in the town, uh, in their name, and uh, there were a long-standing family that had shops, and I think this one was one of them, you know, the Bridge Street, but this this used to be called Dunning's, I think it's a hairdresser's now, I don't know if it's still operating as a hairdresser's, but I think it's a hairdresser's now. 
But yeah, that's a that's quite a quite a historic building that one in the town. In terms of like uh, old families that used to run shops and whatnot in the town. And then here, this building here that's all boarded up. This used to be called I think it was the King's Arms. But we, we I know it is the Bowdy. Uh, I think it got the name the Bowdy because it was something to do with an American gang from New York or something like that came over at one point and uh, their gang was known as the Bowdy gang or something like that. I don't know, I can't, I, I don't, maybe somebody can enlighten me on that one. I think that was just some story that I was told when I was in the bar one night. I used to hang out in here to play pool with some of the local lads, even though I don't drink any alcohol. I still, uh, I still liked a good, a good game of pool, and it did have a good table in there. So, it was, uh, it was named the Bowery by the locals, but I think it was the King's Arms, uh, in terms of what the pub was actually called. And over here, this building here, this is Radio City. It's called Radio City now, right? But when I was a lad, it was in disrepair. When I was a lad, there was nothing in there when I was a lad, you know, and then they, they refurbished it and turned it into a community centre. They refurbished it and turned it into a community centre in terms of like uh, having a hall, uh, having a gym, uh, there was a sauna and steam room. Uh, there was quite a few things in there. Uh, this is the river. The river actually runs right underneath the cross. So this is the cross here. So it runs right underneath all the way through uh, underneath this uh, bridge here and the roundabout sits directly on top of this this bridge. This actually used to be a toilet. <laughs> so that used to be a toilet, which is no longer a toilet. I wonder actually, if you were to, to knock through there, I wonder if there'd still be like an old toilet in there. You know, because I think the reason that was a toilet was because it overhung the river so when you did a dump it went, probably went straight in the river <laughs> which is which is you know it's, uh, it's raw sewage going into the river and I'm not sure it's a, such a great idea but I mean fish fish aren't fussy about what they eat they would quite happily eat your uh, your leftover dinner but this is Radio City here now I do believe there was a radio station in there at one point uh, they did uh, broadcast, but I don't think there is any more. And it says Radio City School now. I believe it is actually a school uh, for kids that have some, you know, some learning difficulties and whatnot, you know. So I think that's uh, what it's used for now. It's kind of a building that's never really had a proper purpose in the town, you know. It's always been kind of a failure, to be honest. You know, it's kind of sad, you know, it's always been changing. You know, when I was a boy, it was it was, it was derelict, and then when they changed it to Radio City, it never really took off as as a, as a sort of a community centre. You know, you think it would have been right in the centre of the town, but I don't think enough people used it in order for it to make it a success. There used to be an internet cafe in there, and then there was a little uh, restaurant in there where they used to sell, like, American food and whatnot. But, nevertheless. Uh, but here, this is Tesco's, right? Now, he, all the way along here... Uh, that's where the, the old police station used to be, but starting here and running all the way along there used to be a row of buildings, a row of old buildings uh, that used to stand there that they knocked down to build Tesco's. I don't know what was behind uh, those buildings. Uh, I think probably something to do with Knox Mill here. Uh, so this is where they, they manufacture and uh, repair and maintain fishing nets. Uh, and other kind of nets as well, other kind of textile materials and whatnot. This is actually a really historic building in this town uh, in terms of the family that run it. I think a lot of these old towns used to be mills and whatnot, you know, so uh, this is this is our mill. I'll actually take you down there in a minute, but I'll just go along the main street because there's a couple of historic buildings along the main, main street as well. Uh, there used to be a building stood here also, uh, that used to be uh, some kind of insurance office or something, I think it was. I think it was an insurance office. Uh, I remember it when I was a kid as an insurance office, but I think it went on fire. I think I think it went up in flames and they just levelled it. 
and they've got a big fence around it now. It's kind of a wasted bit of land now, to be honest. There was plans to make it into some kind of community garden, but in order to do that, it would take a lot of work. And I don't think the council were willing to invest the time in doing it, and they were going to be relying on volunteers to do it, and I think it's too much work for volunteers to be able to do that kind of thing. Uh, this used to be the bookies. I don't know what it was before the bookies, mind you. Uh, it's closed now anyway, which is a good thing because I spent way too much time in the bookies. But yeah, it's closed now, so uh, this shutter's been up for a while and the windows were smashed, so I don't know what, exactly what happened to it. Along here, before my time, along this bit here, it was all co-op buildings, old co-op buildings. If you know anything about the co-op, you'll know it used to be like a, a bit like a Tesco's, you know, where it used to do lots of different things, you know, like in terms of groceries and selling, you know, clothes and stuff like that, you know, they used to do lots of different things. Uh, this building here hasn't really been used for anything since I was a boy. I remember there used to be some kind of air conditioning uh, thing in the middle floor there and there used to be a paper shop in the bottom here. Uh, I used to go in there every morning for, at, before school and buy a Yorkie when Yorkies were actually big and chunky bits of chocolate you know it would give me the sugar rush to get through the day and I'm pretty sure the top of that building up there used to be some kind of recreation room for old fellas to go up and smoke their pipes and play pool and stuff like that you know I can't remember, my dad told me something about that building. Maybe any, any, anybody in the comments, tell me what that building actually used to be before it was what it is now. And I'm only 40, so when I was a kid, it was a paper shop there. Uh, and uh, I think it's old air conditioning units. It says something on there, it says uh, graphical virtual services. No, graphical visual services. Must be something to do with computing. But I don't think it, I don't think it is anymore. Uh, and but I, it's a really big building actually. It could be used for something. And they refurbished it just recently. Uh, all the sandstone was in bad condition, and they had scaffolding up, and they refurbished the face of it. I think that was the council that funded that. And uh, along here is my favourite place to get cakes. Ooh, I love the place to get cakes. There's Irvin's the Bakers. Now, I'm not sure how long Irvin's the Bakers has been running for, right? But, if you know anything about cakes, oh, I love the cakes out of here. I don't know, I, I, I've, been, I've been around a lot of places, right? But the cakes out of here are just amazing, I love them. And that's the opticians. But, that's been, that's been there as long as I can remember it. I don't know when it was built and when it was put there, but it's been there for as long as I can remember it. Across the road here is some kind of uh, youth project. It says KYP, which is Kuburni Youth Project. Something to do with trying to help young people in the town, but there's a lot of renegade kids running about the place that could probably do with some help, but I don't know how much they can do in terms of, you know, helping those kids. And here is a historic building in this town. The Walker Memorial Hall. Now, this building is actually a theatre. Uh, it's got a stage and it's got uh, like a balcony and whatnot. And I remember actually going there once as a kid to watch a play. I can't remember what the play was. And honestly, if I'm gonna be completely honest here, I don't know who Walker is. Is this guy in the? Is this guy on the statue here? You know, you can see uh, the obligatory cone on top of the head. You know, that's just a usual stamp of Scotland. That I think it's like an ongoing joke. But this is Walker here. Now I'm not actually sure who he was, but I'm guessing he's some sort of historic figure in the town. You know, and at the moment it's used as a gym. There's a gym in there, uh, and there is some offices in here that the council use in terms of, uh, you know, the support that they provide in the town. Now I'll go down and I'll show you. Actually, before I do that, down here used to be a museum. 
So down here in the back of the Walker Hall used to be a museum. I'm not sure what happened to it, to be honest. I'm not sure what happened to the, the stuff that was probably in the museum. I actually never went to the museum, so I don't know what actually was in there. But nevertheless, uh, it's not there now. It's a bit like most of the town, to be honest. Most of the town is uh, falling apart and it's got no real significance anymore. You know, like the, most of the shops are closed and most of everything is falling apart to be honest it's kind of sad to see it happening but we live in an economic time where uh, the councils constantly blame budget cuts on their lack of ability to maintain the town and the structures around the town especially historic ones you know and it's a shame because Coburnley has a real history, especially in uh, in the industrial age, you know, with the steelworks and with Knox's Mill, you know, that, that this has got a real deep-seated history in the industrial age. I think uh, it was posted not too long ago on Coburnley Folk. It was posted not too long ago. Uh, that's the Facebook page, Coburnley Folk. Uh, it was posted that there was a beam in the top of the Empire State Building that has a stamp on it that says Glasgow, eh, no, eh, that says eh, Glengarnock Steel Works on it. The Empire State Building in New York has steel from the steel works down here. And this is the river here. As you can see, there's a bit of water coming through it today. Some of these trees need trimmed back because that's going to restrict the flow of water and that's not good because this is all built up at the sides to prevent flooding and that's underneath the bridge that's where the uh, roundabout is so that's quite cool I used to play under there <laughs> so this here is one side of Noxie's mill uh, this here up here is like a Christmas tree uh, that lights up during the Christmas time uh, they turn it on and it like kind of uh, does lots of uh, flashy lights and whatnot. And I believe all of these pictures here were done by local school kids. You know, just to try and brighten the, this this side of the building up a little bit, because you'll see from this side it's looking a little bit worse for wear. You know, some people coming and I'll try and not get them in the video. But as you can see, the building isn't looking very good now. They still use it, believe it or not. It doesn't look like it's used anymore, but it is still used. And you can see how big a building it used to be. And actually, this is only a small portion of what used to be Noxie's Mill. There's something about the river that just watching it flow through the town actually I don't know what it is about the river. It's just very homely, I think. I don't know, I just, I always like to, I think it's because I used to play in it when I was a kid. You know, like, I think that's why I, I, I've got such a connection to the river. And also my dad used to take me fishing in the river. Uh, not that there's that many fish to be caught now. The big trawlers raking out all the salmon and sea trout. There's probably not many fish coming up here now. It used to be like quite a, a, it used to be quite a good salmon river, but it's since uh, declined quite rapidly because of the because of the way that they these big factory boats rip out everything. But nevertheless, it's right next to Knox's Mill here. Uh, I believe these here might have been loading bays at some point, uh, and uh, big bay windows look. Uh, some smashed windows as well, but they, they still use it. They do still use it. I'm, I was in there on a open day. They do an open day, uh, Noxie's Mill like uh, open day. I remember being in there, and th there is still machines in there, you know. And it's still called Knox. And I, I say Noxie's Mill, but I don't think it's a mill. I might be wrong there. I don't know. I mean, uh, I, I don't. I think they've always done like nets and. Uh, like uh, fishing nets and stuff like that. I don't know what it actually was, you know, before. I know that, they, uh, I think it was, I think I remember 
one of my uncles saying that it used to make like a twine, like kind of like 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 kind of like uh, what is it called? Like string, but it's called twine, and they, they 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 wrap it a certain way, and then they use like kind of wax or something like that on the on the chemical. They use that wax as some sort of preservative. But look at that. I mean, you can see that there used to be windows on this side. And the pole, there was a some sort of building here as well. Look, you can see the, the arch way here. And basically, and they've got all these blue sheds now. These probably probably easier to maintain than these old buildings. But these blue sheds now, I mean, that's a uh, Knox, W and J. Knox. Aquafil UK. I honestly don't really know what it is that they do anymore. It says industrial textiles on there, established in 1778. <sighs> established in 1778. That's quite a historic building, that. And here, this old rickety gate here, this old gate, <laughs> oh my goodness, this brings back memories. This used to be where they, they brought the coal. So they brought the coal and they'd put it in bags. And then they'd put it on the back of a wagon. And then they would deliver it. That's when all the houses in this town were all made of... Oh, they were all coal, heated house, houses. And this is where they used to bring the coal and pile it up and put it into bags, sort it into smaller and larger chunks, you know. But that's basically... A small portion of the town there. I'm guessing this building, because if you look at this bit here, this probably used to be part of this. Because if you look at the stones on there, and you look at the stones on there, I'm guessing that all used to be the same thing. And look, and there used to be, there was windows and doors there, so there was definitely a building there. You know, and that actual, that actual wall there, even though that's a, a more modern part, there's actually a bit on this side of the burn here that's the same kind of sandstone as that. This is the laid side uh, of Coburnie Bowling Club. I've always just known it as Coburnie Bowling Club, but now it says laid side. I don't know if it's always been that way. But my dad used to play bowls here, and I think my cousin uh, plays bowls here as well. You know? It's actually a really beautiful green to play on. Look at this. Oh, look at how green that is. I don't know who the I don't know who maintains that, right? But they do a wonderful job. Look at that. That green there. Look how good that is. I mean I know it's just rained and you know and the it's autumn and whatnot, so but that is that looks good, doesn't it? That looks that's a great that's a great I mean I can't see one single weed. I can't see a single weed or any fungus or anything. That's amazing. But yeah, that's the Bowling Green. And you've got all the companies. Uh, you've got CK Contracts, which is actually uh, a construction company that works out of the town. Uh, that's a local guy uh, that started his own company. You've got Knox Mill over there as well. Uh, Murray and Martin Services. I don't know what that is. Uh, Spears Care Home. Pretty sure that's up in Beath. Then you've got Co-op Funeral. WT Contracts Limited, Overbite, what's that, Domestic Oven Cleaning Services, hmm? Well, I don't know what they all are, but I know I know what some of them are. <laughs> but down here also is quite a historic building. I'm going to show you this. It is actually a residential building, so I'll not give you too much of a, a, a detailed look into it. Uh, but I believe this building and the one across from it was built by the Knox family. And a lot of the actual historic buildings in this town were built by the Knox family. Uh, which is, you know, because obviously they were probably one of the main employers in this town. In fact, they were probably one of the only employers in this town at one point. And then the steelwork moved in, or I don't know whether the steelwork was here at the same time or whatnot. You know, but this wall here surrounds this old building here. And it's, it's a residential building now, so I'll not go nosying in about it, you know, but it's uh, split into, I think, uh, five flats now, you know, but that would have been one big house. 
you know, like somebody would have stayed, somebody important would have stayed there who worked for Nazis. And there's the, the gate there, look. I can imagine that would have been a beautiful gate at one point, but it's kind of rusted and falling apart now. And then there's another historic building down this road uh, that you might be interested in. It's just the opposite side here. This is also a residential building, so I'll not poke my nose in too much. But on this side here, you can see the similar kind of pillars, you know, and the gates and whatnot. These gates are in better condition, actually. And this building here is also a historic building in this town. I believe it was built by the Knox family also, you know, which is quite something. I remember one of my uh, uncles, my grandmother's uh, sister's husband, telling me about when he used to work for uh, these companies, like the Knox Company and whatnot. He worked for a few of these companies. He was quite that was what that was what that was what his career was, was working for these companies. And some of the stories he tells me, I wish I could repeat them because he just. He just knows so much about what actually went on. And actually, you know when you listen to like old timers talk sometimes? You listen to old timers talk sometimes and I don't think you always get like, like, into the story as well, you know, like I think the, the way that old timers tell the story, sometimes you get bored and you start disconnecting with what they're saying, right? But when my uncle talks, or no, when my uncle talks, when my... I don't know if he's an uncle. He's like a, kind of an uncle. Uh, when he talks, it's actually quite interesting to listen to him talk, speak. Sorry, I'm trying not to get other people walking around in the video. But yeah, when he when he talks, it's like, it's so interesting, some of the stuff he tells you. And I don't know if it's just because I'm interested in the history of the town and the area, you know, but... Uh, and he talks in a really... A really interesting way, you know. He really, he really, I think he enjoys telling the stories of his of his youth, and it's really actually actually good to make a good a video. I wonder if he'd be interested in that, because he is like, he's a wealth of knowledge, you know. He's got so much knowledge about the town. He should write a book. That's a good idea. Well, I don't know if he's got the time to be writing a book, but you know. But down here is the river. Back to the river again. See, the river runs right through the middle of the town, really. You know, the, the river... I think the town was built here specifically because of the river. This These houses here are... Uh, these houses... I think... I think that some people jokingly call them the Lego houses. But... Uh, I think there used to be some kind of wine distillery or something here. Because that's called the wine hole down there. And it might be because people used to drink down there, actually. Yeah, I don't know what there used to be. I remember before these houses were built, these houses, uh, this was a, this was a, just like a barren piece of land. There was nothing here, and they built these houses here. But I don't know. I was I was too young to remember what building was actually here originally. But the river's got a good run on it today, and you can see the old. See that you can see the new built the new wall there. On top of the old, on top of the old wall, the old wall is still standing. That's unbelievable, isn't it? And I bet you, if I look down here, yeah, look, the old wall is still down here as well. Look, the new wall has been built on top of it. I swear to God, they don't build things as strong and as durable as they used to, because that is amazing. You know, these walls are probably the same age as that Knox Mill over there. What was it, 1776 or something? I bet you these walls were made during the, during the construction of that mill. You know, and, and this is like running, this is constant running water. Since 1776, when these walls were built to, to contain this river, those, I mean, look at look how old that wall is there, look. I swear, they just don't build things like they used to, you know? And there's a little, a little weird here. There, there actually, there's a few, a few locations, there's some pipes that run across the river. And I think that's what that is there. It's just like a little bit where, there's a, where there was a pipe. But I don't know, how, you know, I would love to see 
old photographs of what this used to look like. You know, because that would be amazing. And it looks kind of dangerous just now because it's running quite high. But when it's running, like when it's not running as high as that, uh, I used to play in there as a kid. And uh, over there, I don't know if you can see that, there's a little, whoosh, a little, little burn that comes out of there. So there's a joining, so the, the, the river comes around the corner here and there's a little burn that comes out of the river here and that actually goes all the way, there's a tunnel that actually goes all the way under the town and we used to play in that. I used to climb through that tunnel as a kid. Because <laughs> I will, I mean I can't get down off of this wall as a kid. You know the drop is about, probably about, I don't know, about 12, 15 foot. But, yeah. And these are all old historic buildings. This used to be a chip shop here. This one, this is, it's all burnt down, unfortunately. Yeah. This used to be a chip shop. It was uh, Benny's or? There was one called Benny's and there was one called Dominic's. I can't remember which one is which, but I think this one was Benny's. Uh, and it was a chip shop for as long as I can remember. I used to go to school at, and come, come back from school and go to this chip shop. As you can see, it's in looking a bit worse for wear. I think there was a fire or something and it's not looking too good. That actual is a CCTV camera that there's a cone on the top of. I don't know if the fire destroyed the camera. Uh, but I think one of the one of the original buildings of this town one of the very first buildings of this town was in here. This is a Craig House Square. And I believe that this building here is one of the oldest buildings in the town. That one with the white next to the white car there. Still used as a house to this day. But and this one, I remember this being some kind of wood shop, because at the back there used to be some kind of mill. You know, and now it's an art gallery. The fella that does this art gallery is uh he's really made an effort to like uh change this town you know like and, and keep everybody up to date with the history of the town I mean I mean here's here's a photograph of what it would have looked like I mean that is unbelievable in the middle of the 19th century Craig House Square that's what Craig House Square would have looked like because remember there's a burn that's running running underneath the underneath this underneath this bit here so underneath these buildings there's a burn and that's the burn that runs under there. So that, that bit there, that square here, is this building here. That's unbelievable, isn't it? It's amazing how much things change. And here's something here, what's this? Something to do with textiles. And there's the Craig House, 1767. Which I think was before. What was it? Seventeen. What, what was it? When was Knox? When when did that say Knox Mill was? It must have been around that time. I can't remember that when that Knox. When I said Knox Mill was there. It's Cockton. I mean, this town's been here a long time, hasn't it? Really, to be fair. I think this here. As you can you can see a little burn coming around the corner here. And these paintings were done by Elizabeth Joy Steele, and I, I believe she's a local artist in this town. Uh, look at that one there as well. Look, that's uh, I think what the what the lock shore would have looked like with the steelworks. So this is the old mill here, the old mill in terms of uh, Knox Mill I'm talking about, and this is the steelworks. Glengarnock Steelworks. Remember I was telling you about Glengarnock Steelworks being uh, exports of of steel H-beams and stuff like that. And I'm pretty sure one of the H-beams is in the Empire State Building. Because somebody sent a photograph back when they were doing a tour of the attic of the Empire State Building and uh, I'm pretty sure there was a stamp on the side of that uh, that beam that said Glengarnock Steelwork. Oh, there's some more over here, look. So, what's this one here? Oh, oh, that's oh, this is what this is what the wee square would have looked like. What date is this? 1904, on April 14th, 1904. So this is an actual photograph of 
Oh, this is this is about the Yeah, there was there was a murder. This guy murdered his family in that house. <laughs> yeah. It's quite a sad story actually. But this there's a good photograph of what the square used to look like. Just obviously a sad story. Here also. Oh look. Like this, there used to be. A, like see, before the, 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 this, all this section has been knocked down. Looks like a hairdresser used to be here, and this building here. I don't know if you can just about see that, but there used to be a building here as well. It was a pub, but it was called uh, Tamsin's, I think it was called. It's amazing how many buildings are actually gone that you totally forget about. I mean, Tamsin's was there when I was young. And look at that for a picture. Look, is that an illustration or is that a picture? No, it's just. Is that? I think that is just a, I don't think that's an actual picture, but look at that, no cars. That looks amazing, doesn't it? I'd love to go back in time and see all of that. And then we've got the, got a mural here. This was one of the uh, local guys that does the art gallery. Can't for the life of me remember his name. But it's a uh, Mona Lisa by Kavani Artist. But it's, 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 it's a little bit of colour in such a dreary town, isn't it? It's such a dreary, like, run-down town. And a little bit of colour, a little bit of history can go a long way, you know? And that's what the cross used to look like. Oh, look, there's all the old co-op buildings. Look, remember I was telling you about the co-op buildings? There they all are there, look. That's all the old co-op buildings that are no longer there anymore. They knocked them down and they are uh, residential flats now. I think for the elderly, actually. And there's that old building there, look. Some old boys standing outside smoking a pipe. I think there is something in that because that's the stairs that go up to the top here. So I think there is something. I remember my dad telling me something about it used to be like an old man's smoking den or something. You know, we used to go to smoke the pipes. Yeah, so that's that's basically the town in a nutshell. And here, I believe, is it here? Right there, nope. I believe I'm over the top of the river now. I, I can hear the river through that drain there. So I'm over the top of the river that you, that runs underneath the, the town. So that is Kobane as I remember it and as it is now. I'm only 40, so it's, uh, I don't really remember as much as what I should, but there was buildings all over this place that are no longer here anymore. Like, like, like here on this corner where this car park is, a building used to stand, it was a pub called Tamsin's. And I wonder, I wonder if there was a building next to it. I can't remember if there was a building next to it when I was young. I honestly can't remember. My grandmother used to stay up here. And uh, Kaburne Conservation Town, so it's a conservation town. But for those who aren't here anymore or grew up here or whatever, that's what the town looks like now. And then there's, there's the Salvation Army and Snedens. I remember Snedens. That used to be a, a place that used to sell alcohol. You know, uh, is uh, specifically an alcohol sales place, you know, like, what do you call it, off-license or whatever. It's no longer an off-license now, though. I think it sells, like, uh, arts and crafts stuff now. You know, because Tesco's took over most of the town, to be honest. Tesco's took over, and now we pay, like, ex exorbitant prices for, for food. Prices I never thought we'd ever have to pay for food, to be honest, but hey-ho. But yeah, this is the town now. I hope it's been interesting. Have a good day.